Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name. And I'm excited to welcome every one of you to this broadcast. Hey, listen, it's going to be a powerful time of teaching and learning and looking into the perfect law of liberty today. Invite a friend, a family member, wake somebody up. Let's get in the world. It's going to be a powerful time as we study the word together. I have co-hosting with me this morning. My wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome today. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice and we thank you for grace, mercy, and the blessing. Thank you for Jesus. Oh, thank you for Jesus. We are come to Mount Zion, and we rejoice that we are right here in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We are come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. So we ask for everybody connected right now. The eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. Veils fall off your eyes today. Clarity of insight. Your mind, clarity of thoughts. Understanding breaking forth on your inside like never before. And let these realities overshadow you completely and cause you to walk in the light that Christ has made available to you. Thank you, Father, for your word that will come back void today. We celebrate what you have done for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, today we're looking at the spirit of adoption, the spirit of the Son, the spirit of Christ. Wow. The believer at the point of the new birth receives the spirit. He has the spirit. Every born again believer has the spirit of God. That's what we've been establishing. It is tried to understand how that this was explained with the use of several concepts to explain this same reality. Mm -hmm. This is so fundamental. Romans chapter 8 verse 9, honey, read for us. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In Romans 8, brother Paul described the spirit that we have received that lives in us as verse 2, the spirit of life. Verse 9, the spirit of God. Verse 9, the spirit of Christ. Verse 15, the spirit of adoption. Verse 16, the spirit. These do not describe different concepts, but the same with different words to characterize what we have received. The spirit of God, his spirit, the spirit of he that raised up Jesus or Christ from the dead is the spirit of Christ and is the spirit of life. And is the spirit of adoption. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. Now, Romans 8, 14 to 16. Honey, read for us. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So, Brother Paul explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the Spirit which we have received is not of the world, but of God. Mm. In fact, let's read that scripture on 1 Corinthians okay. chapter 2, verse 9 to 14. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Now that's talking about the Old Testament saints. Mm -hmm. All right, the next verse is us now. But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, so, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually designed. So if you observe, he said, we have received, mm. past tense, we have received the Spirit of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. See that. Now, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, I want to read that for us also. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Six. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, 
crying, Abba, Father. Paul explained in his epistle to the Galatians, similar to how he did in Romans, with regard to the Spirit. We have received. Mm. In verse 5 he says that we may receive the adoption of sons. The term adoption, which implies placement as sons, was also used by Paul to explain the same fact in Romans 8. Observe that in Romans 8, he used the term the spirit of adoption to refer to what we received. While in Galatians 4, he says that we have received the adoption of sons. In 5 and 6, he stated that we are sons because God has set forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. The phrase Abba Father also seen in both texts shows the fact that in the new birth, we are born of the Spirit, we are born of God, therefore we are sons of God and God is our Father. Thus, the spirit of adoption is the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Son. Earlier on, Paul had explained the promise of the Spirit and how it was received by faith. Read for us Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. This only will I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. You received the Spirit by the hearing of faith, mm. which is the gospel of salvation. The day you heard that gospel of salvation, you believed it, you received the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we received it by the hearing of faith, not by the works of the law, not by trying to score points with our morality. Mm. It was by the hearing of faith. The Spirit is received not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith. Mm. The same was buttressed a few verses later. Galatians 3.14. Read for us. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit here can be understood to imply the promised Spirit. Okay. The promise is not different from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the promise is the Spirit, the Spirit is the promise. Mm. So then it will be the promised Spirit. Spirit, mm. as seen from what he was discussing in Galatians 3 2, receiving the Spirit, and also in Galatians 4, we are sons because God has set forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. So, what the believer has is the Spirit of Jesus. Mm. The same Spirit in Jesus is the same Spirit in the born again man. No more, no less. No inferior, no superior. Same Spirit. That's what Brother Paul would say to the church at Corinth. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the believer, one spirit. Thus, the believer at salvation received and now has the spirit of the Son, which is the spirit of Christ. The term spirit of Christ thus will point to the new birth where we are born as sons of God. Every born again believer is born a son of God. You have the Spirit of God indwelling you. You are possessed by the Holy Ghost. He lives in you. He occupies you completely. You are his house. You are his residence. Every believer is born of the Spirit. Hence, you can walk in the Spirit. Hence, you can live in the Spirit. Hence, you can function in the Spirit. Because you are born of the Spirit. So, because you are born of the Spirit of God, you have God's capacity, housing God. He lives on your inside. Oh, the believer is not struggling to house God. He houses God. That is his nature. That is what makes you a born again. A born again believer is one who has made himself, by faith in the gospel, God's residential address. Mm -hmm. So God lives on your inside. You are a son of God. He is your father. By new birth, you are made a son of God. Yeah. You can't be a son of God until you are born of God. So because you are born of God, you have his DNA. Mm -hmm. The book of James says, of his own will begat he us. So it was his will, it was his desire to have us as a family. The book of 1 Peter says, being born again, not of corruptible seed. The word seed, there is the word sperma in the Greek. It means sperm. And sperm is where you have DNA. That is, you have the DNA of God on your inside. God cannot be defeated. You cannot be defeated. He cannot fail. You cannot fail. As he is, so are you. His life is at work in you. The believer is totally covered 
totally saturated. In fact, the believer is immersed into God. All of God is on your inside. That's why you are a believer in Christ Jesus. You have the capacity to function in the realm of God, in the class of God, to function as a new creature. That's what you have in Christ Jesus. And today that's the kind of victory you should, you know, manifest. Mm. Wherever you're found, you should walk in that confidence. You should walk in that consciousness. When you pray, pray with that consciousness. When you speak, speak with that consciousness. You're not a coward. You're not weak. You're not limited. You are one with God. He lives in you. You live in him. All that is his is yours. And all that he can do, you can do. All of his life is on your inside. That's who you are as a believer in Christ Jesus. Lead us in the confession, honey. I have received the promised spirit by faith in Christ Jesus. I have received the promised spirit by faith in Christ Jesus. I have the spirit of God. I have the spirit of God. I have the spirit of Christ. I have the spirit of Christ. I have the spirit of the Son. I have the spirit of the Son. Therefore, I am a son of God. Therefore, I am a son of God. Amen. The spirit bearing witness with our spirit. That we are sons of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We reign with Him in life. Oh, hallelujah. Listen very carefully to these things. These realities are your realities. And you must function within these realities. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we decree and declare for everyone watching the broadcast today around the world. We take authority over every identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Everything that tries to rob you of your reality in Christ, we resist it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are what the word says you are. You are complete in Christ. You are complete in him. The head of all principalities and powers. Where he is is where you are. What he has is what you have. What he can do is what you can do. And he does all he can do through you. Therefore, we decree that today. You will enjoy this reality. The life of God will find full expression in you. We rebuke sickness and disease. We come against oppression. And every demonic voice of affliction, we shut it down. And we lose you. We release you to walk in the liberty that you have in Christ Jesus. We release you to function in your realities by virtue of his resurrection. We declare that this day your steps are ordered. We declare that this day you will proclaim Christ without fear. We declare that today you will preach the gospel in and out of season. The grace of God abound towards you. You will always have all sufficiency in all things. You are bound unto every good work in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed beyond the cause. You are kept by the power of God. This day we decree that favor is at work on your behalf. And we thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Thank you for the spirit of God that has possessed us. Oh, Jacola Tabara, Catole, the Beberi, Ketina, Kalina, Manangolo, the Boro, Kotus, Catalia. Today I declare that your people function in robust revelation, robust provisions of redemption in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for answered prayer. Mm -hmm. We give you praise, Father, Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, praise God. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage you to order for this book and order extras for people. For yourself and for friends, especially in this season of Easter, people are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus all over the world. This will be a timely gift to put into somebody's life, to give to a family, to give to a friend, to give to somebody and encourage them to study it. This will be a valuable asset. So order for it today. Reach out to our office. The announcer will tell you how to get copies of this material as a gift, as a blessing for someone out there. We are excited that every day we're able to bring this resource to you. We're able to bring the mirror of God's word for you to look at yourself and remind yourself of your true realities in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Before we sign off for the day, honey, one last word for viewers. Yes, you have a son's spirit. You are born as a son. You do not have a servant's spirit. Right. You are born and you are God's son. Whether you are a lady or you are a man. Right. You are born as God's son. Right. Son's spirit is what you have shine, manifest as a son in the house. Mm. Amen. 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 And we're excited, friends. You walk in that reality, remind yourself, I'm a son of God. I possess all of God's resources mm -hmm. on my inside. Yes. Oh, yes. And when you walk with that consciousness and reality, every devil in hell mm -hmm. recognizes you and gives way to your desires manifested. Mm -hmm. 
You're blessed today. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to connecting with all of you tomorrow. Make sure you invite more people to this platform to be fed and equipped with this word. And we look forward to sharing more fellowship with you tomorrow, same time, same platform. And until then, this is Rachel and Abel Damina say that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. What is the effect of his intercessory office? What's the effect? Verse 35 of Romans 8. You're jumping ground. Jumping ground is coming. Romans 8, 35. Read for me there. Who shall separate who? us? Who? Who? How many of you remember we've been talking about who sings? Who shall lay charge? Who? 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 Okay. So now he says, who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. From the love of who? From our love for Christ. And from our love for Christ. From what? From his love for us. What is the love of God? For God so loved the world that he gave. That means who shall separate me from Christ? He lives in me. Who shall separate us? Who shall? Who? Who? Who shall? Read for me, girl. Read for me. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? He breaks it down so you see things that have tendency of separating. Tribulation. That means no matter the tribulation, even when you are weak in the tribulation, his love will hold you. Even when you let go, his love will grab you. He's been doing it forever. Yes. What about Peter? If you are the one beat me to come, it's Peter that requested. Jesus said, come. As long as Peter was looking, he was walking on the water. Then he took his eyes off. It's not Jesus' fault. It's Peter's fault. He started sinking. Jesus should have abandoned Peter to sink. But it's not in his character. He reached out. He grabbed him first. Then he said, why did you doubt? He didn't stand to watch him sink and say, why did you doubt? Didn't you know you shouldn't have doubted? No. Before indicting and rebuking him, the first thing he did was to save him. Savior, Savior, Savior here. My humble. That is why we call him Savior. The work of a Savior is to save irrespective of the condition. Whether you're right or wrong. Because that is his name. That is his job. He saves. He grabbed Peter. That is God's character. He grabbed Peter. When Peter stood now over the water. He said, why did you doubt? He didn't leave him. He saved him to the uttermost. To the uttermost of that journey. Because that is his nature. If he gets involved with you, he doesn't leave you along the road. He carries you to destination. No, no, no. He does not abandon people he gets committed. So, that's why he could now say it. Being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun this good work in you will be faithful to finish you will not be the one to finish it it is still he that started it that will finish the question who started the salvation plan jesus who will finish it jesus I i'm teaching good this morning eternal guarantee read for me he began he began to list the things in verse 35 or famine or nakedness or peril or sword that means even when you are naked and you say, I don't want Jesus, how can I suffer like this? Jesus will say, well, me and you are stuck. You can do nothing about it. Nothing can separate you. Even Boko Haram, sword, even Boko Haram cannot separate you. Even Boko Haram cannot separate you from Jesus. Not even persecution, not trial. His love it's not your love. His love, when it catches you, you are caught. Any day by any, any means, you hear about his love and it enters you. It's over. It's over. Look at the father's heart. Can I show you the father's heart? 
You want to know the father's heart. The story of the prodigal son, the character is not the prodigal son. The character of that story is the father. In every parable Jesus gave, there are fictions. Okay? There are fictions. There are facts. And there's a lesson. That prodigal son's parable has fictions and facts. But the lesson in that story is the father. The father's heart. This boy came, took everything from the father. The father gave him because he loves him. The boy took it and went to a far country. You think you can go far away from God? Even when you think you are far, his love is there waiting. You can't frustrate God's love. No, you can't. You can't. The father was waiting for the boy. After the boy finished wasting all of that, he began to eat with pigs. The boy came back to his senses because of the father's prayer. He said, how many servants does my father have enough to eat and to spare? I will arise and go back to my father. But I will tell my father, I'm not worthy to be called a son. Make me a servant. How can a father with two boys as sons and many servants be willing to make one of his son a servant? The father is not looking for servants. He's looking for sons. The Bible said the, the father kept his eye on the way. Every day the father was watching to see if by any chance the boy will show up. That's the loving father's heart. He kept looking, he kept looking, he kept looking. And one day, he sighted the boy afar. As soon as he sighted the boy, the father ran. The father ran to the boy. He didn't wait for the boy to come. He ran to the boy. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? The father ran to the boy. Why? There are two reasons why the father ran to meet the boy there afar. Number one, love. He's happy to have seen his son. Number two, he doesn't want that boy to come back in that disgraceful manner. So he ran to cover his shame. He ran to demonstrate his love. When the father met the boy, the Bible says, the father started kissing the boy. Before the boy could say anything, he smoothed him with kisses. He kissed everything. This boy has been trekking for a while. This boy was, he must be smelling. The father kissed out the smell. Then the, father, the boy began to read, I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me, before he could say, make me a servant, the father interrupted. Hey, my servant, go home. Bring the shoe, bring the robe. Bring my ring, my son. That the father re-emphasized the boy's position. That in spite of where you've been, and in spite of what you've done, you're still my boy, my son. My DNA is still inside you. Shatobala debege. Breya, no, 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 no. Elia, do, 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 do. Ah! The love of the father. The love of the father. What are you talking about? The love of the father. The servant ran home. Brought the things. The father from outside. Before anybody could see this boy. In that disgraceful state. The father clothed the boy with royalty. Put shoes on him. Put ring on him. Cleaned him up. Ordered for a party at home. Him and the boy walk back home. Nobody knowing anything has gone wrong. They walk back together in equality. Because righteousness is equality with God. Am I teaching here? Yeah. Righteousness is equality with God. They walk back together. Nobody saw that boy in a disgraceful state. Because God does not look for how to disgrace you. That's why when a person goes to a church, we are the man of God disgraces you. We need to find out who that man of God is representing. God is not looking for to disgrace you, molest you, make caricature of you, embarrass you. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the God I'm talking about. His love for you covers your weakness. It covers your shortcoming. His love for you protects you, cleans you up, defends you, stands for you. And his love for you is there for you. Even when you are not there for him. The Bible 
Bible said they came home into a party. The party was full blast. The party was full blast. This boy came back into celebration. Nobody remembering where he went. Nobody in the house knew that this boy had a situation. Then the, the, the elder brother, the elder brother, heard the noise in the house and said, there's noise, what is going on? He asked a servant. He, he, didn't even, he was too over-righteous. He didn't even have a personal servant. He asked one of the servants, what noise am I hearing? And the servant said to him, your brother is back. That guy knows how to keep, sure make things happen, man. Oh my God. Since, since that guy left, the house has been quiet. Can't you even know by the music that the guy is back? The guy is back, man. Let me go and enjoy my life. Anywhere you find grace, man, they make it easy to enjoy life. <laughs> That's why they're angry with us. <laughs> enjoy yourself. It's not your fault. Somebody paid for it. Tell your neighbor, why not? It's been paid for. I enjoy it. It's the gift of God. The elder brother came, the law, legalism. Lo, these years have I served you. I've been faithful. I've never messed up. I've never done wrong. I have kept the Ten Commandments. I have kept the law. I have kept this. I have kept this. I've been faithful to you. And you have never killed for me a kid. Look at mentality. With all this CV you gave of your faithfulness, what you qualify for is a kid. The picking of a cow. You have never killed for me the picking of a cow. A kid. And then he says, but this your son. He didn't even call him my brother. This your son. Who went and wasted your money with harlots. Where did he get that from? Accuser of the brethren. The father looked at him and gave it to him squarely. All these things were yours. But you were a dummy. You couldn't enjoy them. Religion, religion finished you. All these things were yours. So since you don't know how to use it, the one who knows how to use it has arrived. Let's join the party. Let's not waste time. <laughs> Glory! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.